All right, so me and Aria are back at Enigmatic Nomadics Van Build 2017. Uh, today's going to be a little bit different kind of video because there are possibly two different people I'm going to speak to and they have very interesting stories. One of them is this gentleman right here. So everybody, this is uh, Bob. Yeah, Bob Mondo. All right, and uh, Bob, where are you from? I'm from Maine. Maine. And this beautiful school bus behind you is uh, home? Yes, it's home. I've been in it for about a year now. I'll, this is my second year in it. Yeah, I had to take a few months off for radiation and stuff. Yeah. Uh, radiation for? I had stage 4 squamous cell carcinoma throat cancer. Uh-huh. The doctor said I wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to make it a year. I wasn't going to make it six months. Yeah. And how long ago was that? I was first diagnosed in December 2015. Okay, so it's been longer than that. Yep. How are you feeling? Um... Side effects from radiation are a little brutal, but I'm very fortunate to be here. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. 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 Loving life. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, is there is that part of the reason you're living in the school bus? Um, it, it actually is part of the reason I'm, I'm in the school bus. You know, life's too short. You, know, you never know how long you got. I want to see a whole lot of stuff. And uh, I just travel around. I'm seeing as much as I can see. I pick up people that need rides, places. I pick find them on rideshare pages and stuff like that. Young people that are going to certain places, you know? Uh-huh. Kind of pay it forward. I'm lucky to be alive and, you know, I'm going to help them out too. Yeah. And you also mentioned you pick up dirty kids. That's what they call them. I like to call them travelers. Yeah. It's like kind of a derogatory term, but okay. they yeah. call themselves that. Yeah. So for those people who don't know, what kind of people are these? Dirty kids are younger homeless people and, like, they younger people that train hop and hitchhike all around the country and everything. and. You know, sometimes they get really taken advantage of, and, yeah. you know, I, I like to be a safe place for them. Yeah. And uh, where are you going at 4 a.m. tomorrow? I'm going to pick up somebody else it's, that wasn't in uh, California, and they're going to meet me in Quartzsite, and I'm going to bring them back here, and they're going to travel with me for a while. That's amazing. Yeah. How, how long do you think, are you guessing? I don't know. It's, uh, from the sounds of it, a while, probably four or five months. Three, yeah. Four months. Depends, you know. Yeah. Whenever they get tired, I'm going to go, you know. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there a particular reason that you like to have people with you or, or to do something good? Do you like a companionship? Uh, like, yeah, it, the company's good, but um, you know, pay it forward. I like, uh, you know, I like to provide people with a safe place for a while. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, and I've learned a lot picking up so-called dirty kids. I, they're super tour guides, you know. <laughs> They've been everywhere. You know, they're going to see a lot of stuff that you don't see. Yeah, they point out a lot of the really out of the way stuff that you didn't have no idea was there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and what were you doing before living in the bus and things I like that? I was a merchant mariner before my health got bad. I was, I had, I had a heart, uh, four heart attacks. I died a few times, and you know, I'm, I'm really very fortunate to be here. So. Yeah. Now, how, when you say you've died a few times, what what it, exactly does that mean? Well. Um, I had a widow make a heart attack that I waited 24 hours to go to the hospital for and they went and put a stent in my chest and I died. I was dead for three and a half minutes. And, you know, they, they revived me after hitting me with the paddles a few times, but I remember it clearly. It was a weird feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Is there is there anything that you changed from before that experience to now? Do you have like a different outlook or oh, anything? Oh yes, oh yes. It's, it's definitely changed my life in a big way. I'm, I'm a lot less judgmental towards towards people because we're, you know, we never know what, we're, you never know what life's going to hand you. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, you know, and I ain't no better than anybody else. And, and you know, this experience, this whole, my health is, is really proven that to me, showed me that I'm not any better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I like to share that story with a lot of young people, you know, and and hopefully, that, you know, what I do for them, they'll they'll remember it and pass it on, you know. Yeah. Uh, what would you, if you had any advice to your younger self, what would you tell yourself? Do it now. Don't wait till later, because you don't know if later's gonna be there. If you know, I'm 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 leaving here. I'm going back to Taos. I got to go out of my way two and a half hours, but I'm gonna go over the Hoover Dam and the Grand Canyon. I could wait until I come back around again, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back around again. You never know. I could get hit by a truck tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. Um, and uh, are, you, are you medicating yourself as well? No, nah, this is just this is just so I don't start smoking cigarettes. Oh. <laughs> I was but, just... Yeah, I, I got through my... I, I was... I, I treated my cancer with uh, Rick Simpson oil for quite a while. 
and it kept my cancer at bay for over a year. And I was going through Texas and they took all my meds away. And by the time I got back to Maine, I needed radiation because my cancer had spread so fast. Wow. But yeah, yeah. I was stage four before I went out on the road last time. And I was taking RSO and it just stopped the cancer dead in its tracks. It wasn't going away, but it wasn't growing. It wasn't, I mean, I could live with it. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it, it wasn't a good thing, but I was living with it. Yeah. And when Texas took it away, it just, it, my cancer grew and it grew up into my brain. It was pushing my brain ca uh, against the back of my head and the pain was just unbelievable. Yeah. So I needed to get radiation just to shrink it so it wasn't, so it wasn't so much pain. Yeah. But I, I just told the doctor, I said, at this point, if I'm going to get radiation, let's go for growth. And he said, it's not going to, it's not going to cure it. Yeah. And four weeks after I ended radiation and he went back and there was still two spots. And he said, I, I told you, it's not going to get rid of it. And I went back four weeks later and my doctor's like a kid in the candy store. He can't find any of it. He said, I really think it's gone. Wow. So I got to wait uh, a little, little while longer for another PET scan until the burns from radiation go away. All right. Because they show up as cancer on their PET scan. Yeah. So. I think I already know the answer, answer to this, but would you prefer a hospice or, or the short bus by yourself or with friends? The road. Yep. Yeah. The bus and the road and people like this. Mm -hmm. Like you see all over this event right here. Yeah, and why is that? It's real life. It's real life. Hospice, hospice is real dying. This is real living. 